All right, everybody. Yeah, I'm getting used to this Facebook Live still. Well, when you just got to roll some dice and you need the best advice for doing that, you can always check out the Myth Wits. When we bring on certain guests, they will uh, give you the best advice possible. It's the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture. Every week, we invite industry folks to come on and play games and talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Michael Kafis. hi Guest host, James Carpio. Greetings and salutations. And our guest this week, returning guest, Sean Kelly. Thank you. Sean is uh, one of the hosts of Gaming and BS Podcast, where he talks about role-playing games and other miscellaneous topics of geekery. He is also the host of Talent Jockey, a podcast that provides insight and advice to job seekers, recruiters, and hiring managers. Man, you like all professional and stuff, too. You're not just a gamer. You like helping people with their jobs and stuff. Oh, the jig is up. You have... uh divulged my secret identity ah uh, well you know <laughs> it's time to turn your hair this way Whoop. yeah wait a minute does it you know it parts do you part it on the other side when you go is it more buffoon bomb bu- was it not buffoon not buffoon, not buffoon. <laughs> bon- what, is it? what is that called it's a uh, uh, like buffon? a pom- buffon yeah you buffon it the other way or yeah. <laughs> I, bu- I buffon it any way you want Pete. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh my god! All right, so so Sean Kelly, uh, we met we met him at uh, uh, Gary Con two, I think two years ago, I believe, and uh, him and him and uh, Brett, uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, they friended us. Uh, I don't know if it's unfortunate for us or for them. Uh, one of us. They, they like the punishment. I mean, they don't take uh, they don't take it uh, the hint. I- I figured if this was the road to Hollywood, I mean, I got, I got to get on this wagon, right? Oh, this oh. is not the road to Hollywood. What the hell? This, this, is your agent this is the best road <laughs> and paved with good ba- good intentions to hell, okay? Right. You know, so, you know, what's funny, though, is like, I mean, you should have, Sean, you should have known. You should have known because uh, he, tr- he was getting bumpers from people at, uh, a couple years ago for his show. And uh, he tried to get a bumper from us, but we had been drinking and we kept fucking it up. I mean, like, he, it was really simple, too. And we just kept, I just kept screwing, <laughs> screwing it up. And he's like, it's really great. Yeah, he's it's like, really dude, great. I'm running out of, t- God, you're using up all my disc. <laughs> <laughs> the best so so anyway uh so sean uh let's talk about i want to talk about uh podcasting about- a little bit what what's up no no what? oh oh sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry mike i'm sorry mike has a, he called an audible early i forgot sorry it's not in my notes go ahead mike go go right. sorry my bad pete pete and and actually sean remembers this because we we did this probably the last time he was on the show uh we used to have this thing we started the show with and i just called an audible i had found a couple of words that i thought would be kind of interesting that uh we could uh we could try and see if you wanted to see if you can guess what they are they're actual english words in the english language they are not words that i made up they're not uh from Ur- urbandictionary.com i promise you these are legit words i just thought it'd be fun kind of i want I'm, I, I want to experiment with uh bringing something like that back because i personally miss it so that said i have two words that i've brought for you today all right the okay. first word, the first word is, and, and I will allow you to phone a friend on each word. You happen to have two friends here. I'm going to go out on a limb and say okay. that, uh, that James and, um, and Sean could be friends. So I'm going to okay. say the We're first word though, is, yeah, impignorate. Impignorate. All right, this has got to be. Come on, guys. What do you think? This has got. This has got to have something to do with uh, making baby pigs, like making bacon. You think? Right. I would, no. I would agree. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind it's of stuff. impregnate, but with pigs. To stuff yeah. with with pork, eh? Ooh, or to stuff with pork. I mean, well, they're kind of the same, but Mike said that they wouldn't be dirty. So, and I did say that they would actually be found in a dictionary. Oh, a dictionary. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> these aren't made up words, or these aren't meme words. These are. Wait, okay. Okay. Wait. So realistically, pig usually also like pigmentation. Pigmentation. So I was just thinking that. Some- yeah. Yeah. So it could be something with color or pigmentation. It's to color something. It's to color something, Mike. 
Okay. All right. Impignorate. Well, how about using this word when you want to say that you're pawning something? It is a much fancier term and uh, quite a fun one at that. This phrase does not, however, mean to pawn, but it is to mortgage something. So you're, you know, you're going to like the true, ter you know, essence of pawning, not just like you're selling it. So, yeah, impignorate. Oh, oh. So that's a thing. Somebody in yeah. the chat room got that one. Really? Sunshine McDavis. Yeah. Good job, Sunshine. There you go. Am I saying it right? I mean, it's, it's a small screen. I'm sorry. I'm looking on my phone. Yeah, Sunshine. Okay. I didn't want to say your name wrong. Um, all right. Okay. All right. Nice. To pawn. Okay. Fantastic. Go. All right. Awesome. All right. Uh, ba, 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 ba. The second word is, and I picked this one special for you. Not that that will even give you a hint, but okay. the second one is Bibble. B-I-B-B-L-E. And no looking at the chat. Bibble. I'm not. No, no. It's over. It's, it's look, unless you see me go like this, you know, uh, Bibble. Bibble. Oh, I know Ishka Bibble. Hold on. Oh, well, Harry, there, there you go. Bibble. Ishka Bibble. How could that somehow help you? It can't. It can't because I don't know what Ishka Bibble means. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? I think it's like maybe maybe part of a uh, um, a piece of a letter. So like uh, so like in a um, uh, in a T when you have the cross the cross well there's, that's the crossbar. There's a tittle. I think a tittle goes on top of an I or that might be the jot. I can't remember. Bibble, bibble. I don't know. What, what do you guys about think? a? Um, and maybe a hipster bib for uh, babies. It, it's a bibble. It's it's smaller than usual. <laughs> Women, it looks like a beard, but you put it, you tie it up on the baby. Is that maybe? That's it. it that's okay. a bibble. It is a okay. beard bib. A beard bib. <laughs> Does it have flannel <laughs> underneath? <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't tried to work Merkin in there somehow. All right. Okay. Um, uh, uh, wait a minute, so, Sean. What do you think? Uh, bibble. What do you think, uh, Sean? Bibble? Yeah. It's like a tiny Bible, maybe? Two two bulls. Two oh. bills. Like by like by bull. Like not Bible, by but bibble. bibble. So bibble two okay. bulls. Two bills. It's like like know. two dollars? I, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. Pete, All right, Mike. Pete, I chose this word. I chose this word especially for you because this uh like you know there's people who you know like when you're at your favorite restaurant or when you're preparing for your podcast and they're just like, you know, eating in your oh. ear. Oh, is it mouth yeah, sounds? Eating and drinking noisily. Yeah. Uh, they're, what they're doing is actually referred to as bibble. Oh, I hate bibble. Bibble? Yeah. Oh, I hate yeah. bibble. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I give. I give because I care. Right. You know? I'm going to get a t-shirt. It says like the like the bar sinister on it, right? With the word bibble in it. No bibble. God. There we go. Mouth sound is like the worst fuck. Ooh, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> we would do uh we would start the show, right? We we would get ready to start to do our show and Mike Mike would be sitting there eating his fucking dinner at like nine fifteen, right? He's like trying to get it in and I was just like, You're making me nuts, dude. <laughs> it's like please don't eat when I'm when I have to listen to you. All right. All right. Is that good? Is that all your words there, Mike? Well, I have a whole list I've collected, sure. but uh, let's just I would keep like it to there. Save them. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. So so let's talk about podcasts. We're all podcasters here. James, you 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 don't have your own podcast, but you podcast. You've done it. Uh, you've got the equipment yeah. for it. I know you're I know you're working on one. Well, I was and then I kind of stopped because like other things in life and stuff. Right. It's a ton but of someday, work, right? I mean, you know, I still at least have about 20 to 30 more years of life left. So, yeah, you know, right. hey, somewhere in between there, I'll just do a podcast. <laughs> did, you come, and, did you come with an expiration date? Like, you know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's even a missing child on my milk carton. It's pretty awesome. Right. And Sean, you're you're a podcast extraordinaire. Look at you. You even got the professional mic set up. I mean, kind of like kind of like me. But yours is actually kind of neater looking. I like yours. Well, nice what, what, what are you working with there? I had someone earlier. Jonathan was wondering what you're working with there. It's the E320, I think. I wrote uh, something R320. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. I can't remember. It's, it's like I'm, a weird nomenclature. Right. I'm using a blue raspberry. Oh, wow, that's so sexy sounding. I I, I like the raspberry mic. I think it's <laughs> good. So cute, but it's so right, cute. It's, cute. <laughs> it's so cute. It's a tiny little mic. But at any rate, you know, so so podcasting is is I don't know. There's so many of them out there, and it's funny when 
you know, people decide that they want to do a podcast, right? And they, they decide they're just going to jump into it. And James, you can attest to this. And it is exceedingly more difficult than it seems, right? I mean, to put a good one, to put a quality podcast together, it is like unbearably difficult if you're going to do it right. Well, it I is, know. Oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. Oh, go I was ahead, just going to say, oh, well, I didn't know if this was directed towards. Um, it's, it's you all. It's all. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I was just going to say, like, the fortunate thing for me is that I was never the one who had to slave over hours and hours of editing. So, like, <sighs> I can't really speak from that. So, you know, I can tell from when, like, Pete was doing a Cuba Death with me, or I was doing Cuba Death with him, or we were both doing Cuba Death. Um, it just, I all I did was came come on and give my brilliant personality and just be like, yes, and come back next week. And then, you know, then Pete went to the mines and slaved away for hours on end trying to get that thing edited. So, right. And, I was gonna and say. some po- some podcasts are like heavily edited and some of them are lightly edited, you know, and, and different ones have a different need. But Cuba Death was like super heavy edited. It had like sound effects and background music and the whole thing. It was a it was a production piece that some bitch took me like five hours for one hour of material to get it all done. Cause I'd go through the first edit to fix everything. Cause we'd have, uh, it was me and James and then three guests. So there'd be five people in a damn thing. And I would have to go through and, and, and fix all, you know, all the stuff and tighten it up and cut out bad shit. And, um, you know, and, and, and shorten up gaps where people were like trying to answer trivia questions and they were taking forever. And I'm like, yeah, the listener's not going to like this. So let me shorten that up a little bit. Um, but, there was that edit and that was like three hours. And then there was like an hour of sound effects, like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours of sound effects and background music that I'd put in. And it was a really cool production. I'm really proud of those episodes, but God damn, it was a lot of work. But, uh, Sean, what do you, how do you like, what about your editing on uh, gaming and BS? Editing? What's editing? Do you do any, do you do any or just go, no, we we do what is uh, would be considered live to tape. So you you're recording. We could easily redo everything and and then adjust and post. You do editing, but we uh, uh we do an intro, and then we hit the intro music. It's all live comes through, uh, mm-hmm. and then at the end I may put in the outro because you don't know when it's gonna end. So right. instead of trying to guess and then have the outro end while you're still talking. I got you. Yep. Right. Unless you like literally are on mark with your, you know, other host and you're like, Hey, okay, two minutes. And that's when the music's going to end. Otherwise you just put it in and post and it makes it sound like it's planned. But otherwise <laughs> we don't, I don't, I don't edit anything unless it's really terrible. Like we've got right. some uh, episodes where they, we've gotten drift. So what happens is, as one host is talking and the other one chimes in, they you hear each other in real time, but the recording starts to overlap each other. Yeah. So you have to break that out, which is a real pain in the ass. But Ugh, um, otherwise, we, the ass. editing is such a pain. And it, for us, it's more of our, our natural conversation. Right. So if we have an uh or whatever, plus we have to be, it actually makes me better speaking, I think. I think so. I mean, that's that's pretty much what we do here. I, when I when I do the podcast for this show, uh, for the most part, it just goes as it is, you know. And, and sometimes I'll like the the beginning gets a little dicked up or at the end or something because we have all the streaming stuff and you know all the stuff going on. It, and actually, you all didn't hear the the intro music and stuff because. Uh, it goes out to the stream so our audience heard it, but you don't hear it. I used to do it so that we could hear it, so we would have all the cues and stuff. And, and when the closing music plays, you won't hear that either because uh, it's just the way Hangouts work. So um, yeah. so that I can play sound effects on my computer that you guys can hear. If I play music and you try to talk, it it screws up, right? It Because Hangouts fucks with it and we get like a shitty sound. So I just I just dump it into the stream now. I, I took that out. But yeah, all our stuff is live. It's all live editing, as they call it. So all the music that, that happens, happens right when we're fucking doing the show. So I don't have to like go back in and edit. Because uh, when Mike... Then I decided to do this show when we, we put it together. I, I we we were like, no editing. It is what it is. I don't yeah. have time to edit. It's yeah. fucking too, you know. We'll put it all in the front end. We'll do all, all our work will be in the prep and the setup and our and, and how we build this thing, um, you know, through OBS and stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. I remember that conversation very well. 
Yep. And uh, so, so, so James, you know, when you're um, when you when you were looking at it, so you, your podcast isn't happening at the moment. Um, and I know you were you were gung you were all gung ho. I'm like you're gonna do 15 minute. They're gonna be easy, right? 15 minute podcasts, yeah. right? So what what barrier did you hit? What was it that hit that you hit that you were just like, oh, god damn, it's too much. Um, like the the prep and up to the point was really fun. So just to kind of give a spoiler, the podcast was going to be named because I even I think got a URL and everything, uh, the Virginia City Epitaph. And uh, I already had permission from Shane Hensley from Hensley, sorry, from Pinnacle. He gave me the blessing on doing a Deadlands history podcast. It was going to be 15 minutes long. I went crazy on Pond 5. I think I spent about 100 bucks on just background mm-hmm. music and all this stuff ready to go. And I was so pumped. And then it just suddenly broke down to when do I have the time and focus to do this? And that's what really crushed it. I did a I did a test run of it and everything, and had a tra- like a, a steam train with a whistle coming into, and I was like, ah, oh, here is the mailbox, you know, and all that right. stuff. But <clears throat> when it came down to it, time was the killer. Like I couldn't yeah. theoretically squeeze out that time. When it's fifteen minutes too, which is even sad that I just couldn't go. <laughs> I got to tell you, you know, so the, the TSR podcast network is, uh, you know, it, there's Mythwits is a, is a, is a cur- currently running show. Dead uh, Dead Game Society is one of our shows that, that is continuing to run. Um, uh, Jonathan Reinhardt's uh, Wargaming Recon. Those are the three that are active. Uh, Cuba Death is inactive and so is Game School. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, I was basically running Cuba Death, Game School, and Mythwits, and it was fucking killing me. There was like, I don't know, James, remember it was like six months where we were doing that, and I was literally writing um, material before we went live. Like, I would literally like yeah. send you the stuff. I just finished this, right? And then we would we would be recording the episode and there would be like a flub because James is reading. is like, that doesn't sound right. And I'd be like, fuck, it's supposed to say this. And that would be something I have to edit out later, right? And then we would go back and read it properly. Uh, but I was killing myself, man. I was like, it was like literally seven days a week. I was working on, you know, several hours a day working on stuff. I was taking my, I took my daughter to, uh, she was, she was ice skating. So I take her to the ice skating rink and she's out there ice skating and I had my laptop and I'm fucking typing the episode for the night because it was just, it just took that much work. But yeah, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. I would never want to be a, do something like that. It's too much, too much. So we're, we're, I'm working on, I'm working on getting stuff like fucking pared down and like, uh, I think, you know, game school has to have a manager. That's not me. Uh, Cuba death. If we do that, if we start that back up again, that's gotta have a manager. That's not me because I'm the manager of Mythwits. That's what I manage. And that's what I'm responsible for. I need to find somebody to manage the other and take care of the other. And you know, I'll help. Right. But someone else has to be responsible for it. It can't be me doing all of them because I wear too thin. I, dude, I don't get paid for any of this. You know, I work a full time job, have a kid, and everything. So it's it's too much. Like, hey, Sean, when you like, you're married. You have kids, right? I have no kids. I am married. You have no I have kids? four cats and a dog. You have no kids? Oh, it's Brett. I'm sorry. No it's Brett that has the fucking like Brett, tribe. Brett has five <laughs> kids. Uh, <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> Two of which are still at home. His his eighteen year old just went off to Air Force. Uh, oh, nice! And just graduated. Yeah. Oh, he's so got to be loving that. Well, and he's got a ways to go. His youngest just started fourth or fifth grade, so she's yeah. she's yeah. So I think he's still right. got about five or six years before they're empty nesters. Yeah. Hey, what do you say we all pitch in on a vasectomy for him? What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's needed. I don't. Maybe he's had one. I don't know. All right, hey, I'm just saying, dude. You, I, I want to ask you about this, man. Because when I was younger, I had a, I rode a bike for for quite some time. I had a motorcycle. I, I it was my only form of transportation for like a ye- couple of years. And I live in Maryland, so I mean, I know you live in an area where it snows a lot. But I would drive that motherfucker. Like, not if it was really snowy or icy, but I would drive it bitch all year round. Um, and you had a you had a bad motorcycle accident recently. How you doing? I I am doing much better. Uh, thanks. Yeah, back in August, um, I got hit by a SUV, and my wife was on the back, and uh, it was pretty scary. Um, Brett yeah. Brett 
Yeah, Brett's a big rider. He's been a, he's been riding for a long time. He's got a lot of tattoos. Had a 2016 Harley. And he sold his right after I got hit. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, oh wow. Yeah, I feel like yeah. such what an insensitive you? dick. I had no idea. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my wife had her spleen removed. It was uh no no joke. Oh, no joke. Pins in my hand, a couple fractures in my foot, uh, 17 stitches in my my shin, uh road rash up uh down mm. my left side. Yeah, it's, Ooh, I give her am, my best. Give her my best. Tell her uh really How's she over. doing? Is she doing okay? Oh yeah, yeah. We are. Okay. I mean, if you were to see us walking down the street, you probably would never know. But it was, uh, it was scary. And and we've got some yeah. things, you know. We still had sores and ailments that are, you know, recovering. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, very fortunate to be here and and form a cohesive thought and express it. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, it's yeah, very fortunate. So yeah, you're not you. you're not motorcycling anymore. Yeah, uh, mine was. I actually had some people. I think somebody asked me today. So like, are you gonna? get on the bike in the spring. I'm like, my bike was total. And I don't think I'm going to have the fortunate pleasure of buying another one so soon. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I really loved to ride motorcycle. It's a passion of mine and it's, it's frustrating, but it's man, I drive around in a, in a Jeep and I can't believe I survived as long as I did as, as crazy it is, as it is out there. So just yeah. if you ride motorcycle, be careful out there, guys and gals. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, I rode I rode for a couple of years and um I loved it, man. I feel like uh, god damn did I love I love riding a bike. And uh and I remember in Maryland we didn't have the helmet law. And I'm, I'm if this uh, so I was like I was like nineteen or twenty, you know, as an idiot. And uh when they passed the the helmet law, I was all pissed off. Right? I'm like, fucking helmet law, blah 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 blah. Right. Like and nowadays, of course, it, it's yeah, it's great. Don't you should be wearing a fucking helmet. Wear your goddamn helmet. But well, I even had a, like I said, not as I did. Right. I had I even had a, a ban the helmet law sticker on my helmet, right? It's so dumb. But uh you know, my accident that took me out that that basically destroyed my bike and I wound up never getting another one again. Uh, I was like, I was traveling on this road and this old lady cut me off. Like she pulled out into like into the road and just like basically uh, cut the road off. There was not, there was nowhere for me to go. And I remember I, I, I went left, I, I'm sorry, I went right as far as I could, uh, hoping that she would like step on the gas and just fucking go and open up the intersection again, but she never did. And I, um, I literally, I let go of my handlebars and I jumped off the bike as it hit her car. I went flying over the back of her car and went into a roll and I bruised my butt, right? But I had no road rash. My skin, clothes were not even really scuffed um i really came out of it like almost completely unharmed and i was just kind of like yeah might be done it might be what done. is it what, what is that expression uh god looks after idiots and babies or some shit <laughs> <laughs> hey two for two right here. two for two right yeah two for two right actually <laughs> double double whammy all right so, so anyway look hey Real quick, uh, you know, Sean, I think you've had you've had really good success with promotion, um, and you were telling us about like G Plus and how like how good G Plus is for gaming podcasts and stuff like that, uh, and gaming groups and stuff. Uh, what can you give us like a little bit of like uh, advice on promotion? Like, what what do you do to promote to promote your podcast? Oh, we hit all the social media channels. Um, we got into Google Plus quite early on, and that was when you could do a lot of uh, sharing of circles. So if, if for those of you not on Google Plus, circles are just, you know, things that you can lump people into uh, based on a common interest, however you want to organize folks. Um, and you can post to circles or you can have incoming uh, from those circles. So it's a very decent way of filtering outgoing and incoming. And uh, we got on there really early and gamers had been on there quite early. Um, and so it's, it's a social media platform that gets a lot of bad press. But as far as, um, you know, the following and, and the gamers that are on there, it's a pretty, pretty great community. Uh, it's, it's a, we, we equate it to folks that you would uh, like to know, but you don't know, and you kind of come right. together with a common bond, right? And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be gaming and tabletop RPGs, uh, which is our interest. I mean, it could be, you know, stargazing or astronomy or whatever that is. And so we we got in early and had a good following, and so we promoted through Twitter and Google Plus. We've got a Facebook page, but it, it doesn't get a ton of activity. Um, yeah. So we've yeah, so we created a group 
um, on Google Plus, and it does fine. It's about 400 and some members. Um, it's not right. 10,000 or anything, but you know, it's it's a tight tight knit group um, sharing RPG news and uh, resources and you know banter and advice, I guess. And right, yeah. We use that on our podcast. So yeah, we, yeah. we got to get into that. Mike, is that something that, that like, is, is that going to be my thing? Like, do I need to, do I need to figure out this Google plus thing? Cause like you, you're like the Twitter master at this point. Well, I am definitely you're a Twitter master. A, you you're should always definitely, twittering. <laughs> you should definitely stay with the Facebook because I, I kind of, uh, I, I hang on to Facebook by a thread. Yeah, um, I'm the Facebooker. And, I, I, I got the Facebook. You know, I mean, well, I mean, sweetie, maybe we could both kind of use Google Plus as a as a shared thing. We could make that I, our thing together. You I have your this. Facebook <laughs> thing. I have my Twitter thing, and then we could. Right. You're just you're done. I'm just you got it. Right. I gotta figure out this Google <laughs> Plus thing because because I mean, Sean, you told us about this two years ago, and I still haven't fucking broken the seal. Like we have a Google Plus page, but I don't think I've yeah. touched that fucking thing in years at all. Zero zilch. And I think I am missing out on using a resource that I should be using. You got it. You got to interact on Google Plus, though. You got to kind of share, and you've got to plus one people's posts, and you got to comment True. on them. And yeah, it's so. It's all right, pretty- if I if you were trying to interpret for somebody between uh, Facebook to Google Plus, like uh, sh- teach us, like uh, well, this is the that of of Google Plus, you know. The, as oh. far as the differences go, yeah. differences. Yeah. How to, this so is liking what, is plus one, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So if you you agree and concur with a post, or you want to acknowledge that you've read it, um, you 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 plus it, right? You plus one. Okay. So it's liking, right? That's what that is. Yeah. Now with Google Plus, there's pages that you can like. So if if say Ford Motor Company wanted a brand page. You could like a brand page and they put updates through that page. So that isn't wholly dissimilar from Facebook pages. Uh, Groups are communities. So it's specific uh, communities that may be. So we have a gaming and BS community on there. You could Mm -hmm. have it about the top secret RPG community. So anything Mm -hmm. that's talked about in that community is going to be focused around, you know, it's kind of like similar to an online forum in that respect. Right. Um, But you know, you add folks to your, you follow them, I guess, for lack of better words, which is sure. friending them, right? Like on Facebook. Um, and then you drop them in circles is what they're called. So that's how you right. organize the people. It's like a, Dude, so I love, I, you know what? It's funny. I, I have not been able to crack this Google Plus thing, but I fucking love the concept of Google Plus. Like I, there's a part of me that's like, why didn't this beat Facebook? Like the circles are fucking awesome because like you can post in a circle and it only goes to those people. So like if I had my family who doesn't not into gaming at all, right? Put them in the family circle and then put the gamers in a circle. And then I'm like, Oh, this really cool gaming thing. And I'd post it right to the gaming circle. Right. And they're the only ones that would see it. But equally like Facebook, Facebook does have that. You have your groups. groups. Yeah. They have groups. And and you can curate. It's equally as time consuming, I think, to curate either one. And then you got to. But they curate stole that. Now, they guess. stole that from Google, right? We'll admit yeah. that, right? Yeah. So, so the, I mean, the divide for me with Google Plus and Facebook is kind of like industry people who post there. So, for example, in Google Plus, I always see that it's um, indie game developers. A lot of the, like the Northampton crew and all the all the ones that. You know, do stuff for IPR. They're very Google Plus. It's kind of hippie granola. I don't know. But <laughs> then you go to Facebook, and Facebook, has, it's true. And then Facebook has all the big names. So, like, all the big right. names pound around on Facebook and Twitter. And then the other side of the industry um, posts on Google Plus. So, not to say that if you post on Google Plus, you're hippie granola or on the other side of the industry. It's just that. <laughs> That's where the divide. If I want to go Come see on, what James. they're doing, let's let's isolate people. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. So, <laughs> let's, let's I mean, if I want to see what's people. happening with the latest Apocalypse Engine game, I'll go to Google Plus. <laughs> if I want to see what's happening, you know, with anything else, and I look, go hey, to, uh, James, James is not being insulted. I mean, let's face it. At, at this stage of the game, 
TSR, right? TSR is indie. We're, we're I mean, TSR is basically indie gaming, right? Yeah, no, we're we're indie gaming with a with a pair of big boy pants. That's uh, yeah, right. With, but I mean, with it's a indie, dazzled it's, pants. Let's let's face it. Look, look, TSR is 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 at this point at this point in the game right now is indie gaming. It really is. Mm, I mean, I I think I don't know. I like we're independent as in we're small press at this. That's point. That's what I mean. That, yeah, right. But, but I don't see us because like our games aren't like let's think of a game that uses pancakes and fire ants. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no so, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that that we're we're like we're, we're grassroots kind of like fucking game designers. You know, we're we're not rolling in fucking cash. We're not corporate gamers. We're we're the you know we're grassroots. Yeah, man. but we're, dude. We're, yeah, someday I'm gonna have my Lex Luthor suit. And I'm just gonna smash my fist on a table, screaming, yeah, "Superman right. must die!" You know. So, right, absolutely. Yeah. You know, one absolutely. of the you know one of the things with Google Plus versus Facebook is that Facebook, you don't see everybody's posts. So you could have no 500 friends, and if all those friends post something, you are not going to see every single one of those. No. Oh, thank not God, they they filter it out. And so, <laughs> what? How does Facebook determine what you see? On Google it's a Plus, goddamn you can fucking free. magic algorithm that, yeah. 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 And, on Google and Plus, I, it's everything? Yeah. Yeah. You can set it up so you can see everything everybody's posting if you set that to your mainstream or you could follow a particular circle so you could filter out anything how you want. I have, God I think, it. one of the better ways of, of handling Google Plus. Oh, and I. Shit. I have, oh, this is I the magic. Share this no, you wisdom. told us this. You told Ready? us this. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Pay Come attention, on. Jenny. So yeah, here's take the deal. notes. If you're on Google Plus, this is my way of doing things. There's, uh, you know, mileage may vary, but I have two philosophies. There's public, so everything is public. You post it, everybody sees it, regardless if they have a Google Plus account or not. And then what happens is I have incoming circles and I have outgoing circles. So the the outgoing circles would be, uh, say, topics of discussion. So maybe tabletop gaming, motorcycle riding um personal friends whatever right and uh maybe professional and so i create those circles and i drop people that are that fit into those right and you can fit one person into multiple circles all right so that's key to keep in mind and then what happens is i have a flow one flow two flow three and then i also have a notification circle so what happens is as I get to circle people, I don't know them. I don't know what value they provide. I don't know what they share. Maybe they're all about politics and maybe I don't, you know, I want to circle them, but I don't want their information showing up in my stream every two minutes. So I'll yeah. put them in a flow three circle and I'll turn the frequency of that flow three circle down all the way as low as it can go. So what happens is then everybody in that circle then I am filtering what comes up in my stream. So their popular, I guess their frequency of showing up in my stream will be significantly less. And then what happens is I go to flow two, drop people in there. As they comment, interact with me, I bump the people from flow three to flow two, turn up the frequency to flow two to be even more, right? Turning up the water on that one a little bit more. And then mm -hmm. flow one is probably all personal people that I've known, interacted with, talked, had conversations with, want to see majority of what they post. I turn that frequency up as high as I can go and then I drop people with that. And then what happens is as people post better or worse things uh, that I find appealing, I can drop them in in different circles. And then other ones I can have, whenever they post, notify me. So going outbound, say I just want to post a job, I'm a recruiter, I want to post a job. I post it out to a particular professional circle. So I'm not spamming all my gamer friends that aren't interested in that. Right. 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 Pete, you just got that. That's a good thing there. But Pete, you just got called out for the ice. Just letting you know. I did. I know. I, mean, I know. I know. I know. I know. That, I'm done. There, Everybody, like. I'm done with that cup. I eat. Look. It's been. Wow. Oh, what a bibble. What a bibble head. I, I, look, listen, everybody. Wow. It's been a rough couple of days for me, and I won't even go into why it has been, but there's been a lot of rough stuff. I made a drink, and I wasn't thinking. I put ice in it. And Mike, you know, ever since, like, what, last year, I stopped putting ice in my drinks, and I wasn't fucking thinking, and I put... That's a rule in this show. No fucking ice in your goddamn drink. And I did. I broke the rule. I apologize. Hey, apologize. I, there you go. 
So that was awesome. So Sean, that's awesome. I actually, I like that idea of just having the three different circles and having the bandwidth on each of them at different levels, depending on who you want to hear from. But I guess the most important question of all that I have about Google Plus is, can I use it for porn and nudie shots? I mean, oh God. <laughs> so maybe it's a high flow. I, I've heard you show. could maybe, but hey, dude, I don't you know think what? you. I don't think you that, can do full full nudity or you'll get reported. It's like it's James, well, I won't James, do full nudity. I like that's nudity what the fuck, nudity. dude. That's what Tumblr is for. Oh, I know. Tumblr phone right here. Tumblr porn, nudes. That is the porn. That's the porn site. Oh, and and if you're on Instagram, you can kind of cheat it a little bit with like get naked. Those are get naked sites. Have you seen those? Like oh, get naked God. USA, get naked Australia, and there. Yeah, yeah, and but dude, you know what? I, you guys know Reddit has a CD underbelly too. Come on. Oh, really? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I know. Dude, oh, I gotta oh, tell you. Yeah. I mean, are we really you looking know? for alternative places to find porn? I mean, I, is I, it? I, I honestly yeah, didn't know that. Like, I don't understand why you Thank would go you, to Sean. like weird places when you can just go to like a porn site. And, and that is, right, that, is porn the hub. The that is the end of the discussion. That is the end of the discussion. Okay, I know. We are hitting the halfway mark. I'm gonna. Yes. I'm, I'm putting a kibosh on all this because it's game time. All right, no, 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 no. Real quick, real quick. We can't do that yet because we haven't given we haven't given our prestigious guest a, a chance. Uh, gaming and BS. Tell us about gaming and BS. Oh, uh, so gaming and BS is a tabletop RPG podcast uh, featuring my my buddy Brett and myself, Sean. We actually had a a, a sister podcast that had listened to like a hundred episodes of us and didn't understand that bs is also brett, brett and sean yeah and sean <laughs> uh so yes that's there's a double entendre there but uh yes. yeah we talk about uh, we have a few segments of the show um we we talk about announcements to begin with then we go into random encounter which is talking about email voicemail comments from social media feel those and then we get into the main topic and then we have a segment called die roll where we do one two d four 2d4 miscellaneous yes. points of yes. gaming and geekery that we bring up uh to to listeners so listeners may share something we we're interested in we just proliferate that through the the show resources kickstarters uh, we mentioned the top secret rpg by tsr uh kickstarter and uh you know myth wits we've we've said that we've been on the show before and really you know pimp that. oh yeah yeah we've that done that, man. Man. Been that mass exodus of people that <laughs> How many people us. left your <laughs> show at that point? We had like it was like, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, it's about an hour. Hour we keep it to about an hour and five minutes. Um, and releases we release every Tuesday. We are moving that effective this week to every Wednesday at noon okay. at Central Time. So yes. And it's eating and BS, if you guys have never listened to this, it's fucking awesome. It's honestly, I swear to God, I, I swear, it is my favorite gaming podcast. Any, any oh, of all the gaming podcasts out there, you, you've never heard of us I'm until like five minutes. Mean, no. Bitch. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. And you guys love Savage Worlds. You have a Savage Worlds love affair. Um, I have noticed that, and and I love Savage Worlds. I'm a, a super big fan of Savage Worlds, um, and and I like that. Um, I think Brett is Brett the big Savage Worlds fan. Red is not as much. No, he's not. It's we, you. I, I have run Savage Worlds at Con Games. I haven't run one as a campaign, but yes, I I I, I do appreciate Savage Worlds. Okay. Um, we've actually had a couple of guests. So every once in a while, we'll have guests on the show that talk about maybe a subject matter that we're not fully experts on. And so we had Christian Serrano and Ron Blessing on to talk about Savage Worlds. Right. Uh, Ron Blessing's been on Games of the Thing, and uh, they were both the co-hosts of savage bloggers network so they are much more versed with savage worlds than us um then we've had other guests coming on to talk about gaming other topics we've had ed greenwood on yeah oh, oh he, ed, ed greenwood ed's such been on our show awesome guy yeah, yeah. 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 well you can be funny ready record and just okay ed go ahead yeah, yeah ed, an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> entertain hey, ed and <laughs> i'm gonna sit back you just go yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so no, it's cool. amazing. You're anyone familiar, with anyone uh, look at both Gaming MBS and Mythwits Archives. Ed Greenwood, it would be definitely a great show to watch. Yeah. First jerseys. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Ed Greenwood, he is head of the Ed Greenwood group now that are doing 
novels and and other different projects as a a bunch of people from the tsr days and then he uh is the the creator of the forgotten realms uh rpg setting so, you may have heard of that, maybe. Yeah, he's from, yeah. a gentleman <laughs> from Canada. He's he's the best. I, I love Ed. And hey, hey uh, Mike, uh, you know, did, did you know that uh, Dave Robeson, our good buddy, our fucking really good buddy, Dave Robeson, he is part of the Ed Greenwood group. I don't know if you knew that. I think I did actually. Yeah, yeah. So we have we have a buddy who li- who goes to Balticon a lot, and. Um, uh, I was just talking to I was taking talking to Dave just the other day. He was asking me about so he's doing the Archivos um, project, and he was asking me about you know uh, whether where to stream. He's looking at he was looking to stream on Twitch, and I was telling him, dude, you might want to think about Facebook Live just because of what he's doing. Twitch is good for some things, uh, and I was giving him the you know like our our experiences with Twitch versus Facebook Live and everything. And, um, no, Dave, Dave is fucking, he's, he's the man. I love Dave. And, uh, but he's part of the Ed Greenwood group and he's a really good dude. And now, I mean, I, I gotta say, you know, gaming and BS, very good podcast. I like him, but I don't know for some reason, kind of a fan of the war gaming recon podcast as well. That's a good podcast. War gaming recon is a I don't know fantastic. why I thought I might yeah, right. throw that out there. Right. No particular reason. <laughs> I don't know. Don't no know. Reason. Might yeah. be part of the TSR podcast network. Maybe not. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Is that a new addition to the TSR network? No. They, well, they no. They've been around for a little while. You don't what? know the War Gaming Recon podcast? The hell you say? I Dude, know. I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm not a huge war gamer. I like. I have some bolt action. I know Flames right. of War. Right. I know War Machine. Well, they, I like know of them, but. They are they are the oldest the the longest running war gaming podcast period. Whoa! Ever? Yeah. Don't I, yeah. Don't Jonathan I feel like does a, a good job. Yeah. yeah. And Jonathan, <laughs> you can give me a drink, but I would love to have a war gaming recon T shirt, and yeah. I'd love to have a He's gaming got a and T shirt too. Just right, saying. Yeah, yeah. Just, Just saying. saying. Just saying, we'd wear it on the 2XL. show. Two XL, yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> large. Uh, anyway, so all right, one last thing. Hey, now, uh, Sean, do you want do you want to talk about talent jockey at all? I mean, I just threw it in. I, I wrote you a bio. I just because you didn't send me one, but I didn't ask for one, so I just kind of wrote it. I, I threw you out there. Do you want to talk about no, talent jockey at all? <laughs> sure, I can. T- now that one is is essentially pod faded, so I haven't put out a, an episode. Oh, for really? Probably. Yeah, it's about a year and a half now, but. It would started oh. out. It started so I'm I've worked in staffing and I worked in corporate HR and then I went into information security. And as I was in information security, I was going trying to get back into the staffing industry. And one of the things I wanted to do was kind of put myself out there, I guess show you know have opinions about my industry. And so I started the Talent Jockey podcast. That's got about I think it's like 23, 24 episodes out there. Uh, every once in a while, I'll come across. I, I recruit IT professionals for a living. And so every once in a while I'll come across an IT individual that has maybe listened to an episode on how to, to tweak their resume, or I'll just say, Hey, go listen to this show. And then once you're done with that, come back to me and uh, with a different resume and then we'll see how that is. It, otherwise I'm just going to tell you, I'll look at it and say, this is what you're missing. So before I even do that, just go ahead and listen to this episode, but it's something I've done. I'd like to fire it back up. But the thing is with podcasting, going back to earlier in the show, Sometimes it's not just the work that goes into it. You got to have a real passion to sit down at a mic every yes. week and talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. something. Because you're not getting paid and, to do it, right? Not a not a you know not starting out by any means. And so um, I do have a passion for what I do, but it's also my day job. So <laughs> going to work eight hours and then hey, let's talk about you know what I do every day and coming up with different topics that appeal to a particular audience. Right. Uh, you know. It's like, well, what do I want to talk about this time? Doing offers? Um, you know. <laughs> right, I got you. I got you. Yeah, but you know what? It still probably holds, it probably all holds true still. I mean, right? I mean, because like that shit doesn't change like all that much, right? Oh my God. The recruiting, hiring people hasn't changed in the, the since the dawn of time. And the way right, we've right. done it really hasn't changed. Sure, there's new technologies and different methods to, to maybe lower risk in who you hire, but it it is amazing how especially and i i gotta harp on corporate hr it's just kind of the nature of the beast that some of them are just so far in the past that they you know they i hate resumes i just can't stand them right we still have them they're you know people are like oh they're going away 
Nah, I don't think so. But yeah. All right. I should it tell my changed. wife, you know, you know, my wife is an HR specialist, right? She, now she doesn't, she does mostly like retirement. She does mostly like their, their plans and stuff. So she's not like someone who hires people and stuff. She's more like, um, total she rewards develops, and compensation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, she, but she like, she's more on the, the, the back end of like setting up entire, like setting up how the company is going to do this thing. She's almost like half of a, a IT person. So she's yeah. kind of like, you know, she, she sets up all that shit. She's like, Apparently, really fucking valued at her job, big time. She work, works workforce, than I do. workforce planning, secession planning, yeah. maybe around that. Right. Yeah. Shit like that, yeah. But she might even like your podcast, you know, because she might get something out of it. But uh, so, look, hey, let's do this. So, if you're looking for a job and and you you, you <laughs> know you want some advice, all this shit still holds true. If you're a recruiter, if you're uh, you know a, a hiring manager or a job seeker, talentjockey.com. Check it out. Uh, you can get some good advice there. I'm sure it still all holds true, like you said. Uh, if you want to get advice on gaming, gamingandbs.com. Uh, I personally endorse this podcast. One of my favorite gaming podcasts, period. Uh, you can also check out Facebook, uh, Talent Jockey, you know, Facebook.com forward slash Talent Jockey, uh, forward slash Gaming and BS. Uh, and on Twitter, gaming in, at gaming and BS. And do you want people to follow you on Twitter? Uh, you personally, Sean P. Yeah, Sean P. Kelly's fine. S E A N. Okay, right. now, with an E Y on the on the Kelly. Everybody misses the second. Kelly, right. Yeah, it's E Y. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sean P. Kelly. Good, good, good. Yeah, I, 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 okay. That's me. You can find me on the you can find me on the interwebs. <laughs> right, right. I didn't want to give it out unless you wanted to. Gaming the BS. Them gaming the right. BS boys. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> all right, this is the part of this show where we go into the game. So let me do, uh, let me, hold on a minute, let me get this. Okay, I uh, got that. And Dave, are going to do this. And, and then there's this. And there's that. Hey, and, it's uh, it's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter O'Brien. And on this episode, we're playing Bet the Geek. I have taken questions directly from the D and D Fifth Edition SRD. Each round, I will I will ask Sean a trivia question. Before he answers, I will go around the room and ask each of the panelists whether Sean will get the answer correct or get it wrong. Panelists must also hedge their bet by one, two, or three points based on how confident they are in Sean's geek foo. Uh, once all the betting is in, Sean will reveal his answer. There will be a total of six questions, and each panelist will start with ten points. Mike will be manning the scoreboard. Mike, you got the scoreboard ready? One moment. You, okay, yeah. So Mike will be manning the scoreboard and will update us at the end of each round. We'll start with three warm-up questions to help us gauge Sean's abilities. Uh, good luck, and everybody, it's now time for Bet the Geek. Now, hey, just so you all know, I'm going to play too. So it's going to be me, Mike, and James. And we're going to ask Sean. I'm going to ask Sean questions. Uh, he's going to um, he's going to answer these first three so that we can get an idea of where his knowledge lies and we can, we can guess. I mean, he's got and, gaming and, and BS. This one yeah. is fun because the chat room, you guys can – throw out whatever you think he knows or not it makes no difference right no one knows if he knows it except for sean so right. now and no, sean nobody, you nobody's can... gonna listen to my podcast after this they're gonna be like this guy's completely <laughs> full of shit no, no, now look hey <laughs> nobody, look 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 let, let's let's do this i, I want to put this out there first because you know what a lot of people don't understand is trivia questions are hard as fuck Fuck. I mean, they seem easy sometimes. You know, it's it's like, oh, it's true questions. If you do this thing, you should know this thing, right? Yeah, until you're on the goddamn spot. So if Sean <laughs> flubs some of this stuff, you know what? Let's give him a pass because I have all the answers in front of me. I know the answers. It's easy, right? It's like, you know, the second somebody asks you the question, you're like, oh, shit. Beholder. What do I know about beholders? Fucking beholders. I know they have a bunch of eyes. I know the eyes all do something. I... Don't know what any of the eyes do at this moment because you're asking me. So, so, you know, we do this with Cuba Death. I have Cuba Death, which this is based off of. Um, and when I play it with people, they always feel fucking dumb. And I'm always like, dude, you're not dumb. Trivia is harder than it fucking seems. So anyway. Hint, hint there is a beholder question. 
Just no, saying. there's no beholder. There is no beholder question this time around, Mike. No, I know. He, he got the pre picket. Right, okay. That's why you did it. I thought I'd be yes. gaming him a little bit. But no. All right. Yeah, just All right. Whatever. So let's start. Mike, you got the score up. You ready to go? Yes. The scoreboard's yes, okay. up, bro. All okay, good, bro. but you, you know how this works, right? You, when they say bet you yes or no, and then the amount, and then the correct is yes or no, and it'll do the tally for you automatically. Uh, bet yes or no, the amount. Right, it's it's y and in, the, y or in, then the yeah. amount, and then the correct is y or in, and it'll yes. handle it for you. Okay, got yes. it. All right, cool. All right, so Sean. Oh boy, Sean. Here's your first question. Here's your first question. And remember, Give me a softball. Give me a softball, Peter. Remember, don't let us know whether you know it or not. You got to have your poker face. Poker face, right? We have to guess. So don't give it away. All right, Sean, yes. first question. Which, these are, okay, uh, uh, one more thing. I'm sorry, one more thing, one more thing. These are all from D&D 5th Edition SRD. All right? So it's not some kind of weird version or anything like that. This is all the online SRD. Sean, which two planes are known as the transitive planes? Are you shit? Uh, oh yeah. Three says he doesn't know it. No. <laughs> no, no, no. The, trans just... the transitive plane. Yes. Hmm. Work your magic. Think about it. Like it's it, there's a logic to this. Why I picked this question. Don't don't answer just yet. Just we have to bet. No, we're not betting. No, this is test questions. Oh, oh, test questions. Okay. okay. Yeah. What do you think? Should you want me to just divulge now? Yep. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, not betting. Sorry, this, is your, this is the test. This to, is the. Right. We're trying oh, yeah, to figure out where you stand. Oh, I gotcha. And you could read my tells. Is that the sure. deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm going to say prime material and astral. Very close. It's the ethereal and the astral. Very, very close. Yeah, he was mm. on the right path. On the right path. All right. Mm. So question right. number two. What alignment are devils, blue dragons, and hobgoblins. Oh, chaotic evil. No, they are lawful evil. Lawful evil. evil. Yes, devils oh, follow rules. God. Remember? Come on, that, oh, that's, that's all right. the way back. That's A D and D, buddy. Uh, I'm thinking demons. Yeah. 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 Devils, right? Oh, they yeah. they follow oh, rules. God. Yeah. Okay. No, man, I'm gonna I, have to I, surrender my my hey. Greek card after geek card. Okay. card yeah, no, after. no, you don't. <laughs> no, you I don't. don't know shit about this as a matter of fact i will allow pete to tell the story at the end of this you may tell okay. the chromatic drag story. okay all right all right last question last test question what hit dice are bards oh it's d6 nope that would be d8, d8. god damn it <laughs> all right all right everybody pretty much this show is gonna beat himself all right <laughs> So here we go. So Sean, don't reveal your don't reveal your answer until after we have all bet. Mike, you're going to be running the bets. Uh, right. Here we here it is. All right, first question, Sean. What bonus does the staff of the Magi give to attack and damage rolls? Now hold on, don't answer, don't answer. Uh, Mike, that is uh, your first. What do you think? Is this something I am Sean going to? Uh, could you repeat the question for me, please? Yes. What bonus does the staff of the Magi give to attack and damage rolls? Now, mind you, the staff of the Magi has a whole shit ton of powers. Has all oh, this God. crazy shit it can do. But what does <laughs> Who it give? Who doesn't know that shit? <laughs> Who doesn't know that? <laughs> okay. Um. What? What does it do if that wizard or sorcerer or whatever wants to smack a dude in the head with it? What what bonus to damage and attack does it give? Same yeah, bonus. Right. Yeah, same. <laughs> so what do you think? Right. What do you think? Is he so going to know this one or not? Say, I, I am going to say that uh, I'm going to say that he, he does know it. Uh, and I'm going to okay. be conservative. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, I'm gonna go with two. Two. Okay. So two points right. that he knows it. All right, yeah. uh, James, you're next. What do you What do you think? You think Sean knows this one? I kind of want to say he does, because I mean, this is. I don't think it's changed from any edition. 
It has. I, I will so, tell you this. It has not changed since AD and D, at least. Well, there you go. There's a spoon right there. I'm I'm spoon feeding yeah. it. All right. So I'm going to say he will get it, and I'm going to also give. What'd you give, Mike? A three? I can't remember. He gave. He stopped. Hey, he he did, nobody knows, man. Hey, this Stop is it. a game. Stop this it. Dog eat dog world, man. What? What? <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to say yes with a two. What? Uh, yes with a two. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, I think he's going to, uh, fuck. See, I think he's going to know this, but I'm going to say no for one point, Mike. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say he's going to get it wrong and and for, for one point. Okay. All, all uh, sound. All right. So, all Sean, right. Sean, what do you think? How much, how much damage and attack bonus does the staff of the Magi give? I think it's a plus three, isn't it? Yes! No, it's plus two! Plus two. God damn it. <laughs> it's close, very close. Yes. All right, now, Pete. Yes. Because I said yes, and the amount is two, and correct me. You did not get Pete. it correct. You put a no in. You put an N in because you did not get it correct. Okay, in other words, you got it Look at that. correct. Yeah, I got it set. All so right. mine would, your James would be an N, and mine. Sorry, Mike, is this is a, this is. This is sort of a, a little bit of a new thing that we're doing. I'm being making it so you can show the scores and the formulas are set up in the table. Blah 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 blah. Now, All right, you so, were correct. Okay, so it's the yes. person that's correct. It's not the yes. answer that was correct. That's that all I need is to correct. Know. Yes, yes, sir. All right, Sean. Question number two: What is the breath weapon of a black dragon? My, uh, we're not sent to Mike first. Let's go. Let's go, James first. Wait, oh, this, Sean will know what the breath weapon of a black dragon is. This is easy. Like, yeah, like I think everybody knows it's halitosis. <laughs> <laughs> this is too easy. He's got to get this. Like, if he does it, I'm just going to cry and go into a corner. Um, so I'm going to say, yes, he's going to get this. And I'm going to go three. Oh, Three go points. big or okay. go home. Okay. Bitch. All right. I'll go next. And uh, no pressure. No pressure at all, Sean. I'm going to agree with James there. I'm going to go yes, three. I think you got this. Mike? Yes, three. That's you. Uh-huh. Uh, you know what? A little bit of game theory. A little <laughs> bit of hoping. A little bit of uh, Sean is going to be <laughs> consistent. I'm going to go with his consistency. And I'm going to say... uh. The game theory is going to say that uh, he's not going to know it, so I'm going to say no, he doesn't know it. But I'm going to go three. I'm going hog in. Three. I'm going ball oh, man, in. Man, you are. Oh man, you're going. Don't to... let me down. All right, all right, Sean. Sean, what breath weapon does the black dragon have? Bubbles. No, no stop it! Come on, it's not, it's not. <laughs> acid. 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 Yes, oh. that is correct. <laughs> of course, you knew that one, didn't you? Did somebody text you? Did somebody yeah. text you? Did, no, did, did, he knew that. Come on, that's a basic question, Mike. I threw some basic and hard. Yeah, I'm yeah. checking. I'm checking in here. All right, so, anyway. All right, so okay. next, Sean. Sean, what magical oh, wow. ability does a cockatrice have? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, nice I'll go first, and I'm going to say he's got to got to know this one. But I'm only going to go two. I'm going to say yes, two. Yes, two. James, what do you think? I, I'm I'm ditto. Like, again, this is the same thing with the dragon. It's like if he doesn't get this, serious geek cred will be lost. So, um, yeah, yes, two. Yes, two. Could uh, you repeat Mike? the question, Pete? What magical ability does a cock a trice have? It's a chicken. It's like a it's like a magical, deadly monster chicken. <laughs> With a huge pecker. Yes, it has a massive, nasty, oozing pecker. All right. Well, I'm going to go with uh, the love of my life says I should go with uh, yes, three. Yes, three. All right. All right. It'll be her fault if I'm wrong. So, Sean, what magical Sean. ability does a cockatrice have? It's the fly. To, to fly? Yeah, it's fly. It's flight. That's the magic ability it has. It it has <laughs> wings. Like, like, are you serious? Are you fucking with me? Turn invisible. 
Turn it, turn it. Fuck. Turn invisible. Nope, that is wrong. That is wrong. Oh, it is a petrification <laughs> bite. It's That's what? the chicken. It's a chicken that paralyzes you when it bites you. Oh, yeah. Paralyzes like you. Want me to the lose, don't you? Of, <laughs> there's the Medusa, the Basilisk, is the Mike, Mike Is Mike over yeah. three? I think so. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I think so. pretty much. <laughs> All right. Question number three. Now, come on, Sean. This is, this is, I'm, I'm hand, hand feeding you. What level spell is a fireball? What level spell is fireball? Mike? Even I know this. It's like, I don't okay. know shit. I'm serious. Mike, I know first. a lot about D. Is he going to know <sighs> what level spire, fireball can be purchased at? <laughs> what one. slot? It doesn't matter. I'm sorry, Jonathan. This is said five dollar. Love you, long time. <laughs> I don't even know what context, but all I know is it's probably for me. It's probably the, um the cockatrice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the magic ability of the cockatrice. They, they turn dollar. invisible in my in my campaigns. Goddamn right. it! Oh. <laughs> Come on, Mike. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna say. I, how many questions are there? There are two more after this one. Three, four, fuck, dude, I'm like spent. All right, I'm yeah. gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say one. I guess uh, that <laughs> he <sighs> knows it or doesn't. Uh, yeah, he knows it. Okay, sure. All right. Why the fuck wouldn't he know it? Yeah, I should I'm know it. I'm going to have to say three points he knows it. Who doesn't know what a fireball spell, like what level that is? James? You know, Sean Kelly, you've broken my heart now. I see, <laughs> a few of these questions. <laughs> Red James to the phone, hey, to the did core. He touch your, did he touch your cockatrice in the wrong place? <laughs> <laughs> Only on G+. Plus. Right, um, okay. <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> I am going to say... Yes, what a three. But this is like, okay. that's it. It's like my last chance. Okay. Or his last chance. Uh, his last chance. All right. And did I bet already, Mike? Uh, yes, you said yes for three. <laughs> okay, I can't remember. All right, Sean. What level spell is Fireball? Trace. Yes, yes. that is correct. Uh, could oh, I have man. the English pronunciation, please? <laughs> uh, right. Three. Three. All right, then. Whew, looks like I have points to spend in the next round. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Now we're down to the last two. Last two here. All right. Sean, what constitution bonus does a dwarf get? Oh. Hmm. I, don't tell me. I don't play don't dwarves. Okay. Oh, well. Oh. Or do I? <gasps> or do I? <laughs> All right, James, you're first this time. What kind of dwarf? A regular dwarf, not the hill dwarf. That's a different. They have a actually. They have the same constitution bonus. They have a different so other bonus, but whatever. It's well. If I can be a total nerd, the hill dwarves are the generic. Mountain dwarves are the ungeneric. But just you know, it doesn't matter. They oh, both get the same average. constitution bonus. Your garden variety, right? All right. I am going to say. I'm going to say no, because okay. it, this is one of the things that has changed over many editions. Okay. And um, I'll go no one. No oh, one. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? I got the points to spare. I'm gonna say yes for three. Well, right. Mike. Yes for three, and uh, well. <clears throat> I have no idea even what remembering what the question was, and nor do I care at this what, what point. What constitution bonus does Dwarf get? Right, because, uh, well, just, I'm just going to use uh, the information that uh, uh, James gave in the sense that uh, he doesn't, you know, it's it's changed a lot, this, that, and the other. I'm going to say no for two. No for two. All right. All right, Sean. What constitution bonus does a Dwarf get? Two. Plus yes. two. That's correct. Correct. God damn it. Correct Mundo. Oh, uh, Correct Mundo. Man. All right. Last question. 
Hold on. Oh, I was yes. wrong. Yeah. And James was wrong. And you, yeah, you were right. Yeah. You. <laughs> has that, has that point thing working, Mike? Is that working pretty good? Well, at the, I think it is. Yeah. At the end okay. of uh, the, the three, the four, whatever. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. That's four. for audio podcast listeners. Let's give a, let's give a round up yeah. for this last round. Yes. Uh, what is this? Uh, what'd you do? Six of them total? Uh, this is number one, two, three, four, five. The end of the fifth round. We should have done this earlier. All right, end of the fifth round. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Mike is uh, has a, a, a large lead for uh, last place with one point. Uh, James <laughs> is uh, hanging tight for second place with a solid 15. And Peter has run away the, uh, may I point out, the creator of the game. I have nothing uh, to do with it. I can't tell whether he knows it or not. Yeah, I, I, whatever, whatever. Just saying. You know. Check, checks in the mail, Brian. Correlation right, right. doesn't equal causation. Just right. saying. Just saying. Uh, Pete with 22. So um, last right. and final question. A last and final question. All right, this is just uh, academic because I don't think I can lose, but we'll do it anyway. Sean, how many Electrum pieces... Equal a platinum piece. You might have to, if you want to take notes, you want to do a little math there. But how many electrum pieces in a platinum piece? Electrum. All right. I'm going to go first. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say every D&D player worth his salt has got to know this, right? I mean, it's a little bit of math you have to do because you have to figure out how many electrum in a gold and then blah, 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 blah. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to say three. He knows it. I'm, he's going to get this right for three. James? Yeah, I'm going to say uh, three as well, um, correctly. Again, this has been something that's changed I don't over the has. years. Has it, it has, actually. First edition was a way different economy. Well, fuck, that's... I that's like such a that, that doesn't count. Fourth edition never happened, James. Never. But I, I know my pal Sean Kelly can answer this question correctly. All right, all right. For uh, how, how much? confident are you? Three points. Yep, three points. All right, Mike, what do you think? Well, I'm just going to try and go negative here. At this, <laughs> at this point, it's just a, it's all about the game theory for me. You know, I'm either going to end in the positive or uh, I'm going to go for a donut. You know, either way, uh, I'm I'm feeling pos I'm I'm feeling good about my my play today. So yeah, one no, one no. Okay, all right. So no. Sean, what do you say? How many how many electron pieces equal a platinum piece? Mm, how many electrum to platinum? I think it's. Oh, I know I'm gonna get this wrong. I think it's. Is it five? No, no, no. You don't ask. You're telling. Five. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. five. All right. So hold on. Wait, wait. Five. Okay, five. Five is incorrect. Yeah, it five. is ten gold to a platinum and two electrum to a gold. So it is twenty. Two. 20, 20, Yes. So he did not get that one right, Mike. Oh, so, he uh, didn't get it right. <laughs> oh, wow. Looks like two points for me in the win column, huh? I, know, I, don't, oh. I, I don't even mess with Electrum in my damn game. That's I know. Like, who, who the, the hell fuck is, uses, who the fuck uses gets Electrum? Right. That's, unob never... that's unobtainium. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's the treasure now, type? Now, now I'm just curious. Just... I'm pulling out the book. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, James. Oh, what, yeah. what is it? Fact checking. Yeah, we can't well, go without... This is first edition, but I remember it being a lot different. In... Player's handbook. Is it the player's handbook, right? It's in the player's got... handbook. I got three. I got 3.5 and... here. All right, so here we go. It is actually um, two Electra make one gold, and yep. five gold make one platinum. Oh, shit. That is different. Yeah, that's way different. That's way different. Now, hold on a minute. 3.5. I got to fucking find it. Hold on. Give now, I'm here. looking in the AD&D book. Yeah, so you, yeah you're back at, at first, ed first edition AD&D. Um, yeah. So, oh, so second I, edition, I, it second edition, I think I got it right, right? It's Let's two see, electron. second edition in my hand. Is that second oh, or dear, first? Okay. Hey, how about that well, time? How about that time, huh? Hey. I know, oh, I, yeah, know right. I know, I know. Right. <laughs> it's okay. All right, everybody. 
Sean, thank you again for joining us once again on the Myth Wits. We really appreciate you coming back. Hey, do you think with, with Brett having two of his kids, only two of his kids in the house, I think he can make this show sometime maybe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know he'd love to be on the show. And he, oh, he's, he's made time. Yeah. Sure, he could make it, but he just doesn't want to. Is that what you're saying then? I don't know. I don't know if you guys have solicited him. I, I think he's feeling a little left out actually. Really? I think we tried and he was like busy. All right, look, here's the deal. We're going to do... Uh, Mike, what do you think? We'll do the draft, and we'll have Sean and um, and Brett come on as Team BS, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Sure. You guys can come on I'm and down. be a team. You can do your bidding as a team, and you'll be Team BS. Um, I, think in, I think in 2018, our agent is requiring us to be, like, paired. Like, when we have appearances, yeah. we have to come on together. It's 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 a legal thing. It's, it'll is, work that that, is that work? Is that work for you guys? Is that good? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. We'd love, love to do I'm just not Fantastic. separating your goddamn green M and M's. All right, just you know, <laughs> put the M up, Mike. Right, Unlike right. last time, I was really disappointed with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and hey, James, oh, the movie draft. that's going to be fun. Do you yes. have any? Uh, do you have anything you want to promote that you got going on right now? Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Well, right now, the game I'm currently working on is pretty much in development. So. Uh, as it stands, Top Secret, which should be in a gaming store near you in the next few months, will be uh, right. is the, the only thing I'm uh, I'm particularly pimping. Nothing particularly going in the land of the internet. Um, I've been addicted to Overwatch, so there's been a needle in my arm for uh, a good number of months. Yeah, but, but let's uh, say let's say some of our fans might be going to Total Con. What what pray tell might you be doing there? Okay, well, at TotalCon, I will be running uh, Top Secret New World Order. Uh, there's a big yeah. duh. I will be running a game of um, Pulp Era, which is the game that's in development right now. Uh, I will be doing a random kind of Savage Worlds pirate game because it is pirate-themed. Uh, and last but not least, I will be running the ultimate motherfucking arena sport, The Hunt. The Hunt? Oh, and my if you God! If you haven't played, go to tsr.com slash store and buy a copy. Trust me, this, it'll be the best game you'll ever play in ever. This this game, it's going to be fucking awesome. If you're a Total Con and you're not playing the fucking hunt, you're mi if you're not there, you're missing. You know, it, it is oh going to be so awesome. We're going to give we're going to give Chris Pierce a fucking bullhorn. Okay, oh, that's and he, awesome. yeah, it's going to be fucking crazy. And it's the first half hour or so of the game is going to be a LARP. You're going to have your characters and you're going to be like, you're like wrestlers. So you get this character and you're going to be kind of like a, you know, like, like a WWE wrestler and you're at a party and you're all going to be interacting. And, um, and then when the game starts, Chris will fire up the bullhorn, will jump into the arena and it's going to be 15 of you crazy motherfuckers going at each other. And it's going to be a slaughter fest, you know. It, it, it's going to be it, it's going to be bad ass. So and, definitely, uh, I guess. Last thing, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to my friend Sunshine, who came. I don't know if she's still on, but thank you for coming and listening to the show. Uh, yeah, much Sunshine, appreciated. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right, everybody, go to uh, gamingandbs.com and also make sure to check out facebook.com. Gaming and BS, it is the best gaming podcast. Uh, I really, uh, I sincerely believe that. I'm not just saying that because Sean's our guest. I really do like that gaming <laughs> podcast. Really do. And uh, find him on Twitter at, at Gaming and BS. And if you're looking for a job, talentjockey.com. <clears throat> yeah. So <laughs> thanks, Sean, for coming on. Uh, James, thank you for joining us as a guest host. Uh, thank you. And here we, here we go. All right, everybody, you have just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits Podcast. Catch us live on Facebook, Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, not the month of December. We're back in January. It's the last show of the year, folks. Please ask our guests questions and make snarky comments. Chat with each other in the chat room like our fine folks did tonight. Uh, you can ask our guests questions. Uh, and we will try to answer them if we can. Did they, Mike? Did anyone ask any questions? I didn't. Uh, we didn't get any questions. Nobody. Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, for the first time ever, there was a lot of rolling, uh, rolling uh, stuff in the peanut gallery, and uh, okay. I tried as best I could to any. <laughs> <Keep> uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that's good you're too. Welcome. No, Anyone's just welcome to ask us a question anytime. Right. Like, you know. sure, sure. Hey, if you miss our live show, you can always catch the encore episodes at YouTube forward slash Mythwits. Find us at Mythwits.com and on Facebook and Twitter as the Mythwits. Uh, no, just Mythwits, not the, because don't don't use the the. <laughs> if you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you can listen to us on the go. Uh, Mythwits.podbean.com or your favorite podcatcher, or whatever, iTunes, whatever you do. Uh, do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Please give us a bunch of stars and a review on iTunes. Make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Mythwits over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com. If you like our show, even if you don't like our show, you're bound to like other shows there, other better shows there. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like, share, all the places. Just don't edit it. And for fuck's sake, don't even try to sell it. Uh, make sure to check out studio187.com for more cool stuff and hey if you feel so spirited join our mailing list there's a button you can just click on it it's like two pieces of information and you're in thanks everybody for listening tell your friends to tune in and until next week Mike hey Darth Blix is tearing a hole in the very fabric of the universe embrace it yes